I'm Allison Gaines. For our game, Project Band, I created a texture bank full of hand-painted original textures. So in this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to make your very own grass texture. In this tutorial, I'll use two pieces of software, Photoshop and 3ds Max. 3ds Max is not necessary to make a grass texture, but I'll show you how to test it out and view it using 3ds Max. Also, I will be using a tablet. This is a Wacom Bamboo Create tablet. A tablet is not necessary for creating a grass texture, but personally, I like the feel of a pen rather than a mouse. But it can be done with a mouse, don't worry. We're going to start by opening up a new Photoshop file. I like to name the windows, that way if I have multiple ones open, I can easily reference which is which. Now we're going to make the width 512 and the height 512 as well. This way, it will be a square. And we're going to set the resolution to 300 pixels per inch. Then we have to make sure that we're in pixels, not centimeters or inches, for the width and height. Zoom in on the canvas a little by holding the Alt and using the scroll wheel. Then we're going to go over to the right hand side here and unlock the layers so that we can add stuff to it. We're going to click the paint bucket tool and select a nice deep green color for the background. We're going to add a new layer so that we can edit the grass and not have it mess up the background. Then we're going to go over to the paintbrush and select it. By going over to the top right, we can adjust the mode that Photoshop is in. We will want it in painting mode. Now click the brush settings and it'll open up a few options that you have. We're going to focus on shape dynamics and color dynamics. Now we're going to see what, oh, there we go. Now switch it to the lighter color. We're going to see what it looks like when you draw a straight line. Kind of boring and it doesn't look anything like grass would at all. So we're going to go to the shape dynamics over here and turn it on. You'll want to make sure that the control is actually not set to pen pressure but is set to fade instead. This way when we draw it will fade out. We want to make sure that the minimum diameter is set to zero because if it's bigger then it won't taper out fully and it'll just stay at this one. Well we want the point instead. So we're going to set that back to zero. With the settings we have now, we can draw a few lines, and yeah, it can look like a bit of a clump of grass, but we can do more to give it more depth. If we go over to Color Dynamics and turn that on, we have an option for Apply for Tip. We're going to make sure that that box is checked, and in the first control, we're going to make sure that it's also set to Fade instead of Pen Pressure. Now if we draw a line to test it out, it still doesn't really look right. We'll have to go over into the left hand side and switch the colors so the darker one's on top. That will give the grass more depth as if it's actually coming out instead of going in. I'm going to give it a few strokes here and there and just test it out, see if it actually can resemble a grass chunk. I think it works out pretty well. I'm not really a fan of the way that the blades are overlapping though. They just keep blending into one another. I'm going to go up here to the mode and you can lighten or darken the strokes. So let's see what it looks like if it's the darker one. When we do this stroke, it puts the darkest color first. So instead, let's try a lighter color. I think it's looking a lot better like this. So we're going to leave it with the lighter color mode. Now either hide or delete the layer we've been playing with. We're going to edit the colors a bit. I'm not really a fan of how light the green is, so I'm going to try to go for something that will add a bit more contrast. Maybe a bit of yellow like this to it. I think I like the way that's looking. Now you can play around with the settings a bit more and get different styles. By editing the spacing, you'll change the amount of space there is between each one of the little circles. It can make the lines look longer like this. If you turn the spacing up too much though, you might be able to see the little ridges on the edges of the circles. And that might not give the smooth effect that you're looking for. These blades of grass are way too long for the texture I'm going for, but it's fun to play around and experiment a bit. I'm going to turn back down the size here a bit. I think that looks like a nice grass size. Now hide this layer again, or delete it, and create a new layer that we can actually try to start this texture on. I'm going to start by drawing just a few blades of grass here and there. Don't want them too close to the edges so that they disappear, so try to keep them somewhat in the center for this. You can do the lines in different directions or curving different ways also.
After I've been drawing the blades of grass for a bit, I like to go up to image and go down to image rotation and turn the rotation of the image around. If you're using a tablet, this can also be done by using two fingers and turning it left or right. Now we're going to draw some blades this way, because even if it may not feel like it, you might subconsciously be drawing more lines in one direction than the other. So by keeping the canvas rotated, you'll make sure that that doesn't happen. Now just add in some here and there. There's no real rule to where you put them. Just kind of go with what feels right, I guess. Filling up the space without making it look too crowded. Now even though we've been rotating the canvas, we've been avoiding the edges, so we have this deep green area around them. One way that we can get rid of this is by doing an offset. So we go up to Filter, and down to Other, and click Offset. Now here we can edit whether the pixels move left or right. We're going to make sure that it's set to wrap around when we do it. Repeat Edge Pixels just makes it green on the edge, and that's not what we're going for. And set to transparent, yeah, it does that. So we're going to make sure it's set to wrap around. I'm just going to edit the right and the down till it's about across in the center. Sometimes you can find a darker area near where you want the blade of grass to end and you can angle the stroke that way so that the lighter area will show up in the dark area. Because if you start the stroke in the area where you want it to be lighter, the paintbrush still starts with a dark color so it won't be light there, it'll just have the dark parts of the paintbrush. Now we're going to do another offset and a few more strokes, just filling in those darker areas making sure that there isn't too much detail on one part of the texture. Now we're just going to do another offset. You can't do too many, I guess. Going to go down and actually, you can go up to the top here and select offset if it doesn't matter what the pixels actually are. Or it said there's a hotkey, control F, that'll just do it automatically. Now, I'm not really a big fan of how this one area is turning out to look right here. So I'm just going to hit Control Z and undo back a few moves so that I can just focus on other parts. Once you're pretty content with what you have, just hit the Alt button and use the scroll wheel to zoom out and look at it a bit. If you do an offset from here, you might notice some parts that you didn't notice before. Like right here, maybe try, oh, I tried adding another piece of grass but it didn't look that good so I undid it. Sometimes you don't need to add grass there, sometimes it might just depend on the angle. There we go. By adding a different angle to grass, it looked a bit better. And now just open up Offset again and move it over to the right side of it so you can see your full texture. And just by moving the left and right horizontal and the left and right vertical, you can get a view of your texture all over and see if there's any main parts that stand out, like any seams. If you don't see any major seams, then it's time to save it. Right now, I'm just going to save it to the desktop, and I'm going to save it as grass texture and make it a JPEG. It asked me the file size, and I'm going to go for the largest, because I figure that will have the most detail. Now I want to see what this texture will look like when it's tiled out on a plane, so I'm going to open up an instance of 3ds Max. And I'm going to go down here and maximize one of the viewports so that it's full screen. And I'm going to make a plane. Now I'm going to raise it up a bit so it's not in the grid's way, or you can just press the G button and it'll get rid of the grid. Now I have a bunch of squares, so I'm just going to hit the modifier at the top and make the length and the width segments 1. There we go. Now I'm going to hit this little world up here that is the material editor and I'm going to drag out a standard material. I'm going to drag out from diffuse color and select bitmap. Go to the desktop and grab my grass real quick. Now I'm just going to shrink this and move it off to the side so that you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to right click and turn this into an edible poly. 
I'm going to select the polygon faces, go over to the material editor, click assign to material. If it doesn't show up, hit the little light bulb and it will. Now that the texture has been applied to the polygon, it might not look exactly how we want it. So we're going to go up to the modifier list. And we're going to go down to UVW map. We're going to go over and click the little plus sign beside UVW map and click on the gizmo. By hitting the R button, we can scale it, and using the mouse click, we're going to scale it in and out. Until we get a size that we approximately like. This is what our grass is going to look like on the ground. And there you have it. This is how I made the grass textures for the game Project Band.